right, so good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. And if you're new to us, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. Notably, over our last weekend, through the most epic program we have ever done in our history, the Global Biodiversity Festival. So if you had the chance to check that out at globalbiofest.com, we did 72 straight hours of broadcast with over 150 speakers from every single continent in over 50 countries highlighting conservation and action in the field. So if you didn't get a chance to check it out, go to the website when you're done this broadcast. It's sort of a, a culmination of all that we love to do here at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For today's program, to kick us back off, get back in the swing of things, we are joined by one of our favorite all-time partners, a group we have done 30-plus broadcasts with over the last few years, and that is the Toucan Rescue Ranch in lovely Costa Rica. So with them, we've had the chance to explore macaws, toucans, of course, and tons of baby sloths. More baby sloths than you can shake a stick at over the last few years. Years. and you can find all of those programs on our YouTube channel. But today is special, and today is special because it is World Otter Day. And so we are joined live by Daniel at the Toucan Rescue Ranch, who's going to take us to meet a special friend today for a really, really fun program. So without further ado, let's buckle up. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. And Daniel, take us away. All right, hello everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Daniel. I'm a education coordinator and also a biologist here in Toucan Rescue Ranch. Just a bit of a background of who we are, uh, like this is said, well, to give us grants, we focus on the rescue, rehabilitation, and release of the animals. Between 50 to 80% of all the animals that we receive every single week are rewilded again. However, we do receive some animals, including the queen of Tukem Rescue Ranch, that we're going to meet her in a second. Um, that some they need to stay with us because of different reasons. For example, they were domesticated, they were pets or sometimes people just injure them. So today we're going to learn about the otters, about the importance of them. And also before I start, a big shout out to IOSF, uh, that they, they lead the conservation efforts on pretty much all the 13 species of otters that we have around the world. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to switch the camera so you guys can see what's in front of me. Um, and give me one second. All right, so um oh, the camera switch turned around. That didn't work out so well. <laughs> we'll have to get those folks back. <laughs> if you're joining us for the first time, this doesn't usually happen with them. That's really funny. Daniel's back. Hey, hey Daniel, what happened? <laughs> All right, let me just switch the camera on so we can face it off front. Uh, um, let's we'll hang out together. See if it works this time. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Give me one second, and I can go back. Oh, we got our, our friend there. Having oh, a perfect. Nice. Go for it. <laughs> so uh, this is Emma, the new Tupac River Otter. Um, and Emma is pretty much the queen of Tucan Risk Ranch. She was rescued pretty much a long time ago, almost four years or uh, five years ago. Uh, what happened to Emma is that uh, she was um, in, a, in a river with her mom and some kids instead of throwing stones at her. So sadly, she got separated from her mom. And when we received her, we had to better feed her and how to feed her. So she got really used to, to humans. Um, and you can see right there that we have the whole team uh, just watching because Emma is the queen, so we need to pay some respect to her. Um, and right now, we're also doing some enrichments. So what Sarah, she's the marketing director right there. Um, what she's doing is that she has uh, kind of like a fishing pole with some toys. Uh, and we also put some fish in there, which she enjoys um, a lot. Now, um, in the world, there are actually 13 species of otters. Sadly, most of these species, or the vast majority of them, are endangered. Um, sadly, the only, the only typical of otters, they're not one of the exceptions of this rule. Um, they have many, many, many threats that they face in the wild, including deforestation, but also a lot of people used to, and sadly, they still do. Um, they use them for, for pelts. Not this uh, species in a specific, because these guys are way smaller. The, the total length from the head to the tip of the tail can be around two feet, but they're not that long. And also, they can weigh up to 20 pounds. 
So they're not as big uh, or as big as the one that you will see like in California or in the west coast of the United States. Those guys are the sea otters. However, these guys are the neurotypical otters, and just as the name implies, that means that they live in rivers. Now, also another big difference is that these otters, they are solitary, usually. So that means that they will stay by themselves or just with their, um, like with their mom, for example, when they're babies. But that's going to be pretty much it. You won't see them like any other otters, like in massive packs or in massive groups, uh, where they will be able to, uh, or sometimes you, you probably have seen videos or pictures of them holding the hands so they don't drift away. Uh, but in this case, it's a bit different. Um, these guys will like to be by themselves, they're solitary, but they definitely are territorial. When a female, for example, or the neurotypical river otter, can cover from 4 to 20 miles of river just for, for herself. Same thing as males. So they're incredibly territorial. Um, and sadly in Costa Rica, they're rare. They actually extend in some places. But if you've ever been to Costa Rica, um, and if you've been to the Caribbean, then that's the place where you mostly can find them. There is a river called the Sarapiki River. Um, yeah, go ahead. Daniel, sorry, I just wanted to interrupt for two seconds. A few of the teachers have mentioned it's a little bit hard to hear you. I don't know how your rig is set up, but if you want to move it back, maybe a, an inch or so, and maybe we'll catch your audio a little bit better. Uh, all right, please speak to the water for the water. Maybe. <laughs> Let's try, you know what? Yeah. Maybe just speak a little slower, and we'll make sure we can everyone can catch and hear all you're saying. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Daniel. All right, also what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take out my mask, so that's probably going to help. Just give me one second, and hopefully with the mask, it will get better. Sounds a bit better, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it should work a bit better now. What about now? Yeah, I think it's a lot better. The, the, mask, yeah. the mask can be the mask. smaller than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes. We're socially distancing. And Emma, she's fine. She's socially distancing as well. Perfect. Um, so, like I was saying, um, the neurotypical river otters are suddenly endangered uh, in Costa Rica, uh, as many other otters uh, in the world. Now, in Costa Rica, there's a lot of threats that they face, including pineapple plantations. So, sadly, what pineapple does, or pineapple plantation, what they do is that they take a lot of space. So, the problem with that is that uh, they take so much space that you basically need to destroy the whole rainforest. Um, and also the fertilizers and the chemicals and pesticides that they use. It basically kills the fish that they feed on and the aquatic invertebrate, um, uh, invertebrates that they can eat or mollusks and other stuff. So with declining off the, uh, the diet, suddenly there comes a uh, declining of the population as well. Um, we're going to talk about later what can you do to save otters, not only in Costa Rica, but also around the world. What can you do? There's so many things that you can do from home to save uh, these otters and also create awareness. Um, so just continuing a bit on Emma um, and on her story, um, we received her four years ago. And at first, she was kept in a tiny little enclosure. Um, she was kept in a pool or it was really, really, really small. And we did an amazing campaign over two years, two years and a half. Um, and a lot of people donated and we were able to raise $15,000 to make this amazing enclosure that is just, uh, for her. So you can see that we have the waterfall and she loves to play with that water. She also has a slide over there. Um, she has some steps that she can go over and see the whole ranch. Because she's the queen, she needs to see her kingdom. Um, and also on the back, she has um, kind of like her quarters uh, or her sleeping quarters where she sleeps and where she eats as well. Um, and we can also have a lot of toys thanks to donations. So we also have a filter system that takes care of the poo and the pee. Uh, so we keep it clean. And all that was thanks to donations. So we rely mostly on donations. Um, you can see that she's a bit interested in me, but we're trying to distract her. Come on, Emma, go. There you go. So um, that what just happened 
Sally is the son of domestication. Um, we received her, like I mentioned before, for those of you who are just joining, um, we have to bottle feed her and hand feed her. So she got pretty much used to humans. And although, yeah, that's cute and all, it's not good. Because we want the others to be wild. We want them to be in the rivers. We don't want her to be uh, in captivity, right? So we try to do her best. We try to do our best, but the, the family of this species, that is the Mustelia family, they get domesticated really, really, really easily. So uh, basically she got used to us really quickly. And oh, I think that she's gonna bag over there. She's just, I think that she's gonna poop. So, um, so uh, I'm gonna show you usually what we use. So here uh, you can see Rue, um, and Rue is one of the, uh, is the volunteer coordinator, but also the enrichment uh, coordinator. And what he's doing is like he's putting fish inside of our bowl, so that way we can keep it distracted instead of doing what she's doing. That is exploring the boots. Emma, come on. She loves boots, uh, which is a bit odd. But it's because when we used to clean her enclosure, we have to go in with uh, with the boots because although she's really sweet and all, she's still really aggressive. We need to remind, uh, we need to remember that these guys are wild animals. So although some people have them as pets, which is a terrible idea, they're still wild. They're still gonna bite. They're still gonna act wild. These guys are not dogs. Although in Costa Rica and also in Spanish, uh, we call them besides nutria. We call them water dogs. And it's because they kind of look like a, like a dog in the water. And they're really playful. Not only in here, um, in the ranch like her, but also in the wild. Um, you can look up uh, for videos um, of this. And there's a lot of people that have reported them using mud slides in, uh, like on the banks of the river, just sliding down, um, which is really, really, really exciting. Um, because you will see her just... For them, you will just see them going around and jumping. And that's the reason why we built uh, that uh, slide, because we know that she likes it, and she, she will use it, but not all the time and not in front of us. So sometimes we're on a tour, um, then we turn uh, our back to her, and then she's just sliding down. Um, but yeah, now another thing that we do here um, that I was explaining to you just, uh, uh, or that I was mentioning just a bit earlier, uh, is the enrichment. So what is enrichment? Enrichment is basically a technique that we use to reduce the stress of the animals uh, that we have in the enclosures and to keep them entertained. And that's uh, what we're using right now. So you can see the fish pretty much hanging in there. Um, and that way we can keep her distracted, we can keep her happy. Um, and she's eating a lot of fish uh, right now, um, as you can see. So um, now we can go now over to what can you do to help the otters? Not only Emma the otter, but also other otters that you can find in the world. So one or one thing that you can do that is very really simple is to spread the word. It's just it's to create awareness to your friends, to your family that the otters should stay in the wild. They're not good as pets. Uh, believe me, they bite a lot. They have bitten me before, and they have bitten other volunteers, but we're not careful. Yeah. Um, and like Emma, she can be really nice for 15 uh, minutes, and then she can start a uh, bite, or start biting. Another thing that you can do is to try to raise funds uh, for them. So there's so many uh, different ways that you can do this or accomplish this. So for example, if you are really good uh, with artwork, and you like paintings, for example, then you can um, do amazing paintings or artwork and you can also uh, auction that or sell that and use those funds for, um, and, and donate to the IOSF or also uh, adopt Emma the Otter. We have an adoption, and a symbolic adoption program where you can adopt Emma and those funds that we will get, uh, they will go directly for her care. Not only medicine that we might require, but also for the maintenance of the pool, fish, um, the water, the electricity that we use for running the pump, uh, the enrichment for paying for toys. We also have an Amazon wish list. Um, and we also are in, on Smile 
uh, or Amazon Smile out of the side. So in the Amazon wish list, uh, you can find many other things that we use, not only for the other animals, but also for Emma the Otter. And we use a lot of toys. And some of those toys uh, can be expensive. So um, we get a lot of donations, and you guys can donate that as well. Um, another thing that you can do um, is... Um, although it's not quite practical right now in the pandemic, but you can also, after we come out of this, uh, hopefully it will be soon, all of us, um, the weekend, you can create an event. So, for example, um, let's say that your birthday is coming up. So, why don't you uh, sort of, um, or try to think about it, uh, and try to make another themed um, birthday party. So it can be all about otters, and then your friends can learn about the otters while you're also enjoying your birthday and the cake and the cupcakes. Um, and also you can make raffles in your, in your birthday party. Uh, so that way you can um, raise some money for, uh, for, the, for the otters. Um, another thing that you can do uh, for the otters, at least in the ones in Costa Rica, uh, but also the ones around the world, is if you like pineapple, you can reduce your intake of pineapple. You don't need to stop eating it at all. But let's say they eat two portions of pineapple a week. If you reduce it by one week, you will help the others by reducing the pollution that the pineapple um, plantations create. Also, um, there's the massive problem of microplastics. So microplastics are, as the word says, little pieces of plastic that end up in rivers and also um, in the sea. So there's a lot of things that have microplastics. For example, there's some soaps that you can find. Um, where those soaps, they have literally, what, oh, yeah, she's really getting a bit distracted with the boots. So, oh, sorry about that. So, um, you can buy soap that's natural exfoliants. For example, like shells or rocks or clay. Um, also, if you can buy or if you can use cotton uh, or adaptable base uh, fabrics like clothing instead of synthetics, because all those tiny little fibers that will end up in rivers accumulating on the system of the fish, and then they will end up killing or injuring um, the others, not only in Costa Rica, but also in the sea. So, and now Jesse, if you want to, now we can go over uh, for some questions. Yeah, she's getting a bit entertained on the boots. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm just going to turn off the, uh, the camera. Perfect. Because the camera is stabilizer in a way. So I'm going to fix that. You leap over the wall, Daniel. So uh, first of all, thank you for sharing so many fantastic uh, ideas on how our kids from home can tune in to help the otters. Uh, we have over 1,000 kids right now. Over 30 whole classrooms around North America are tuning in for this. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Daniel at the top of the broadcast and said to me, hey, you know, Jesse, about the 20 minute mark, uh, Emma's going to get pretty interested in my boots. I might need to leap back over the wall. And, and it actually came to pass. That was uh, fantastic. Uh, we are going to dive into questions. We've got so many live groups left. There's Daniel back again on the other side of the wall. But what I want to do to start is to give our live classes just a second to put their thinking caps on. And I'm going to take a question from Lincoln in Miss Snow's class. So Lincoln wants to know, how long do they sleep for? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, well, they do usually sleep around eight to ten hours a day from that long, just as humans. However, they're not so very special. Um, these guys are diurnal and nocturnal, so that means that they stay, can, they stay active during the night and during the day. Uh, pretty much it takes around two naps every single day. Um, so that would be around like right now, but obviously she's so entertained and it's her day, so she's celebrating. Um, and then in the afternoon, Except when it rains. When it rains, she goes crazy. She doesn't sleep at all. She just gets really, 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 really excited. I wish I could live in a place with a waterfall and have two naps a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's head to Miss Petrillo's class. They're joining us live in Calgary and Alberta and Canada. If you guys want to unmute your microphone, come on into the broadcast for a real question. Uh, I'll bring you guys in. Hey, Miss Petrillo. Hey guys, welcome in. Let's unmute that mic. Take one of those questions from you guys. So nice to have you all in today. So Miss Petrillo, right at the bottom of your screen, little microphone symbol. Come on in. Every one of our teachers, you guys can all demute your mics actually with StreamYard, that's how it works. So feel free to unmute your mics now. And there you go, you're in, you're in. 
Okay, so, okay, uh, so um, how do otters, can uh, can otters sleep underwater? Uh, no, they cannot. That's another, another great question. Um, otters cannot sleep underwater. They can uh, sleep um, at least floating, at least they, they are the sea otters. But these species of water, they actually sleep on the side of the rivers. Uh, but they can hold their breath for up to eight minutes. So, yeah, they sleep on the side of the river, no, at least these species. Yeah. A, a good rule of thumb is that uh, pretty much everything that you have sort of has a land background, so all our mammals, all our birds, amphibians, reptiles, do have to sleep out of the water. If you have gills, you're able to sleep in the water because you're able to take in oxygen. If you don't have those gills, it's pretty much impossible for you to do so. So, cool question, guys. Also, I like that you answered some of the questions that we had from a lot of our, our folks online, too, about uh, where they sleep and, and more. So, thank you for that. Uh, let's head to Miss T's class. And Miss T's class is joining us in West Creek in New Jersey. Come on in, guys. Oh, we have two Miss T's. We have multiple Miss T's. Hey, Miss T, one of our Miss T's. Come on in, share a question. Hi. <laughs> We're wondering about um, what otters eat. Is it different for the river otters and the sea otters? Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's different. For example, these guys, because they're uh, found in the rivers. Um, sorry, she's getting a bit distracted. Come on in. There you go. Um, so what these otters would be, uh, there is a from other otters, fish mollusks that they can find, and also you find a lot of aquatic um, invertebrate or insects on the rocks. But then obviously there are things in the world that they do very big rocks, and also in species as well. Yeah, uh, I apologize for that again, Miss uh, D. <laughs> Joining us in Welland, Ontario. My brain fell out in the middle of the Global Biofest and hasn't come back in yet, so I apologize for any misuse over the rest of the broadcast. Uh, let's head to our, our actual Miss D joining us in uh, New Jersey, Eagleswood Elementary. Uh, come on in, guys. Unmute that mic, and you are good to go. Hi. 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 Hey. Um, they wanted to know how they defend themselves from predators. Ooh, that's a very good question. So these guys, what they will do is that they will hide under the roots of some trees, and that will help them a lot. Because if they are fully seen in rivers, they will be hanging like this. So then what they will do is hide under them. Now, the sea otters, for example, especially the ones that you can find in the west coast of the United States, uh, what they will do is that they will get all together, and they can swim really fast against sharks, for example, um, or other uh, marine mammals that they can find in the water. Yeah. We had, um, during that BioFest, we had a program with giant river otters where a caiman, so like a small crocodilian, had come into their habitat and they chased it off and uh, scared it away. So otters can be pretty uh, powerful predators and they want to be pretty scary for some other animals. So cool. Yes, again. All right, I want to take a few quick questions from YouTube before we go to Miss Murphy's class live. Um, so Juliet in Mr. Hancock's class in Georgetown, Ontario wants to know if otters are colorblind, which I don't think we've ever heard that question before. Ooh, that's a really good question. I wouldn't be able to say though. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they aren't um, because these guys, they can be nocturnal, so they don't need to be able to see full colors. Um, but to be completely honest, I don't know um, the, the, the answer to your question. Yeah, I'm Googling this as we speak, and there seems to be like some active research studies to determine this. I know some oh, nice. of many mammals are colorblind. They don't see as well as us. We've got the three different color vision, which is really cool, and it's because we're primates, so we evolved to distinguish color in fruits in the canopy. So uh, that's what gives us our, our color uh, abilities. And then certain creatures like turtles, some birds, and some deep sea creatures can see way more than us, which is really cool. So neat question, guys. All right, Miss Murphy's class, they're joining us in Bradford, Ontario. Come on in, unmute that mic, and you're good to go. Hi there, we are grade ones here in Bradford, Ontario, and we have a lot of questions. Um, our first question was, if otters are mammals, and I know you just said they are, so maybe you could tell us what makes them mammals? And our yeah. second question is how they swim. Awesome. That's a really great question. So one of the, uh, the main creatures that makes them mammals is their hair or their fur. So these species of otters, that if you know, typical otter, they will actually have, uh, or they actually have two thin layers of 
um, a fur. So one of them is able to keep the water out, and then the other layer is able to also a bit of an air in between uh, the their, their fur. So that way they can, they can stay warm um, in some of the occasions where it can get cold in Costa Rica. Um, and also they will use, I don't know if you can see it right there, but also in between their feet, uh, or in between their fingers, sorry, they have these membranes that help them to swim. Also, they will use that tail, uh, it's kind of like a steering, so that way they can steer direction. Um, but yeah, in between their, their, their fingers, they have this amazing membrane that will help them to swim. So they're really, really good swimmers. So one of our biggest questions we've been getting on YouTube, so thank you so much, Ms. Murphy, for sharing that. One cool thing about mammals, so fur is one of the universal things that you'll see in 99% of mammals. Some of the deep sea ones don't have those, some of the whales will be perfectly smooth. So the one thing that unites all the mammals in the world is that they give milk. There are even two mammals, the platypus and the echidna, that lay eggs, which is really, really unusual. Um, but all the mammals give milk of some kind or another. So uh, the one universal unifying factor. All right, let's head to Miss Bitten's class. They're grade fives joining us in Guelph. Come on in, guys. Hi, um, we have quite a few questions, so we'll narrow it down to just one or two. Um, one of my students had asked- um, You're muted. Oh, no, we're yeah. good. Um, one of my students had asked, why do otters like water? And the other one that kind of relates to that is, why do they need to be in water? Yeah. All right, so well, otters, well, uh, you, yeah, so otters love to be in the water, and they have adopted to be in the water because that's where their food or mostly food is. Uh, now, we need to remember that a long time ago, like hundreds of years ago, there used to be way more wetlands than they are right now. Um, that that's where, they, where these guys live. Um, so obviously, by, uh, being at, or by being an habitat where there's a lot of food, they will be able to adapt and live uh, in those places. Um, although these guys, they can be on the water, um, what they will do is that... Um, they are semi uh, or uh, semi aquatic, so half of the time they will spend on the water, like she's doing right now, and then the other time they will spend it on the uh, on the ground. I think by the end of this broadcast, not only will we need to donate to take care of Emma, but we'll need to get new boots for Daniel. Um, let's head to our grade twos in Halton. I know you guys had a little bit of tech stuff going on, so let's see if we can get you in. Hey, there you are. No worries. They're just all virtual right now, so they're a little bit different, but. Their biggest question is about prey and predators. So does the otter have a specific predator or are they a predator towards anyone else? Ooh. Excellent, great question guys. And then Daniel, I know your camera's off right now because I know you're getting a little out of there, but if you want to, there you go. Uh, unmute that, oh, you're back again. Well, I needed to get another pool. Uh, yeah. Since she got too excited and then she was starting to bite. Uh, so I had to get out before she was starting to bite. <laughs> perfect. Um, so, um, sorry, what was the question again, Mom? Yeah. Sorry, my predators, just... predators and prey, is there something specifically that oh, yeah. is there something that eats them? Well, in Costa Rica, there's not a lot of predators besides humans, of course. Um, but in some places, you can find alligator, alligators uh, or crocodiles. There has been some reports of jaguars sometimes um, hunting them. Because like I mentioned, these guys are semi-aquatic. So that means that sometimes they will stay on the land where... Um, sometimes the jaguars can, can get them, uh, same thing as with, with the babies. Um, and in other places of the world, for example, the, um, some of the, uh, oh geez, I, I forgot the name of this animal. Um, ooh, <laughs> the one that is kind of like a whale, I totally forgot the name. Um, I, um, there is, um, there is a whale, but it's not a whale. The killing whales, I believe. Like... Sorry, it's like a whale, but not a whale? Oh, God. Um, the ones are in SeaWorld, for example. <laughs> in, what do we got? Like dolphins, porpoises? Uh, no. Um, well, never mind. The thing is that, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, I totally confused. I went blank for a second. Um, but they do have predators um, in the wild. But I, I don't know too much about the ones in... Um, in North America, however, the ones that we have here, like I mentioned, could be some reptiles and also the jaguars and sometimes ocelots. Yeah. Well, if you think of that mystery creature, we'll be sure to uh, share it with our classes, but keep the thinking cap on. Um, I'm going to take a few quick questions from YouTube. We are whipping through these, Daniel, as always. So much fun to get to ask so many with you guys. Um, Mr. Coster's class wants to know, are otters poached? Does anyone hunt otters for anything? 
Yes, sadly, that's one of the biggest threats that they face among the other threats that, that I mentioned before. Um, sadly, because of that, the population of the otters, not only the you know, tropical otter, the one that we're uh, seeing right now, but also other species of otters in Europe um, and in Africa, but especially in Europe, um, they were just hunted, and also in North America, for their pelts. Um, so a lot of people used to hunt them because their pelts and their fur can be really, really warm. So a lot of people use them basically uh for for coats so that used to happen a lot that still happens but to a minor degree right now she's in the back but she's oh there she is hmm. uh yeah great question guys uh, we have a lot of canadian classrooms today and a lot of canada was built off the back of beaver pelts the fact that they were so popular for use in hats and fur coats and more um into a similar situation with otters so great question guys all right i'm gonna take one more from youtube and then go back to our live classes uh, I want to share one from Miss Kuhn's class. How do otters communicate with other otters, Daniel? Ooh, that's a really good question. So the otters, they will not only communicate via pheromones. So for example, they will poop um, in some places to make uh, sure that the otters know that's their territory. So for example, some river otters, what they will do is that they will poop and pee on the side of the rivers, on the river banks. Another great way that they communicate, especially when they're face to face, is by making noises. Um, so one of the noises, and part of my for my terrible, terrible, terrible imitation, um, but they can make like a noise like, rawr, rawr. and we usually hear her, I uh, hear her all the time making this noise. So that's how they communicate with each other, but also to other ones, um, like they can be saying, "Hey, get out of my territory," um, or it can be also used for mating. Uh, so the males are the way used to attract the females. So not only do we use poop to communicate, which is quite common um, in the wild for other animals, but also uh, their voice, if we will. Yeah. Daniel, your, your audio had a big issue when you were making that otter noise. I think we need to hear it again. What was the sound that they made again? I'm so curious. <laughs> she suggested. No, I won't tell you. <laughs> That's the noise they make. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, I missed it. I just wanted to hear again. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the calendar for the live question. Come on in, guys, and unmute that mic. Hey, Miss Petrillo's group. You know what? I'll come to you guys in two seconds. I'm going to go to our, our Miss D that's in Welland and not in New Jersey first, and then I'll come back to you guys in Calgary. Hey, Ms. D. <laughs> Hi. Um, we are wondering, we know that we prefer otters to be out in the wild, but are there some people that have otters as pets? Yes. How do you feel about that? Yes. Thank you so much for bringing that up uh, and, and, and asking that question, uh, that question because, yes, uh, so there's a lot of people um, that have these animals as pets. In Costa Rica, thankfully, it's not that common, at least with these species. People usually have uh, parakeets, but anyway. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people that have uh, the sea otters or river otters because, of course, they're really cute. But what they do is that they will keep them in a house. Um, so if you go on YouTube, please don't uh, and do this. <laughs> uh, but if you go on YouTube, you'll find thousands and thousands of videos of just people uh, showing their, and I quote, pet otter. Um, and obviously that's a massive problem because um, it, it's a massive risk to the population and, and these guys, like you mentioned, they're meant to be wild, not to be in a house. I'm really, really glad we got this brought up, and this happens in a lot of our Rescue Range broadcasts, whether it's mm -hmm. sloths, toucans, whatever. One thing that we can all do, whether we're on vacation, whether we're at home, is when people have the opportunity for like an animal selfie where something sits in your shoulder, don't yes. do those sort of things, don't share those pictures. Uh, those are situations where animals aren't really happy, they're not being well cared for, uh, and so no reputable organization that is taking care of animals like the Rescue Ranch, like some of the zoos and aquariums in our hometown, would ever do that with an animal. So make sure that you're, you're being appropriate when it comes to showcasing the natural world. We all love nature, that's why we're here, uh, but make sure you're making smart choices when you're out and about in terms of what you, what you share and showcase. So, great point, Miss D. All right, back to Calgary, Miss Petrillo, let's get that mic unmuted, I'd love to hear from you guys. And we are good to go. Hi. Hi. Um, we're wondering, um, do they play with other types of animals? Do they play with other otters, other types of animals? Hmm, that's a very good question. Well, um, these otters, for example, they don't. Uh, these guys are solitary, so they are, they will actually even play uh, with the same species. Um, but they will do play with a, a small families, for example. 
but it can be just, for example, the male and the female and maybe uh, the kid. Uh, like I mentioned before, they can also use water sliders or, or like mud slides that they can find in the rivers. But we haven't seen, at least with these species, them playing with other uh, different other species. They might have them, but definitely not play. <laughs> so one of our most popular themes of questions is how playful otters are and what they do with other otters and with other creatures. So yeah, that. yeah I did. We got that question. They have a good reputation. That's a good thing to have. Uh, listen, by the way, Daniel, I want to mention, uh, everyone on YouTube loved the otter impression, so it was well worth doing it twice because we got a lot of great people. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so that, let's head to New Jersey. If you guys want to unmute your mic, come on in and uh, go for it, everybody. Hey, Eagleswood. Yes, we, yes, we. Right, we had a couple questions. Someone wanted to know if they're related to weasels and then also if – like they swim right away or how they learn to swim? Those are two great questions. Yes, they actually belong to the family of, mus of, of mustelids, if I'm not pronouncing it, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, that family um, is where the weasels and also skunks uh, belong to. Um, and also we have an animal that is called a tyra, but it's kind of like an otter. Uh, he's over there in that enclosure, uh, but we won't see him today because the spotlight is an Emma. Um, but yeah, they they um, belong in the same family, and also yes, when they're born, they're pretty much taught to swim right away because that's a skill that will help them to avoid predators um, and also obviously to hunt. So yes, they will learn to swim within hours or sometimes within days uh, of being born. So yeah, yeah, I love that question. We always get the weasel question in these programs, and one thing you guys should all do when you're done this broadcast. Look up the members of the weasel family. There are some very cool creatures in there. The biggest one is the wolverine, which we've had a few broadcasts on in the past. So sort of pound for pound, the most powerful predators in the world. Um, and as for swimming, one of the things that really makes humans unique is that we really have a long period where we are quite helpless as babies. Most creatures are born and within minutes or days, like Daniel said, can do a lot of the things that they can do as adults because they need to survive that much faster. We have a really long time where we take care of our young. Um, so yeah, great questions, guys. I want to take three more before we wrap up. Time flies and you're having fun. Uh, so Ms. Bitten, if you want to come back in, go for it. Perfect. Um, I had two quick questions from some students. One of them was, how long can otters stay underwater? And the second question was, what is the lifespan of an otter? You're on All right. the so um, the otters, at least these species, for example, they can hold their breath for up to eight minutes, which is quite impressive considering that they're river otters. And usually rivers, especially in Costa Rica, they're not that deep. Uh, but eight minutes is a lot compared to humans that we can hold on. They usually average around a minute and a half, some people even two. Um, and the lifespan of pretty much almost all the otters is around the same. It's around 12 to 15 years. So they don't live for too long. You guys in the, the live groups are asking all the most popular questions on YouTube, so we are, are doing fantastic here, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take one more. Let's head back to Holton for our grade twos. If you want to unmute your mic and turn on that camera, you're good to go for our last question. One last question they did have is where they live in the wild. So what kind of homes do they have? How do they make their homes? Are they usually just staying in the water? And Yeah. Yeah, so with the river otters, they will actually live in dens. Um, so they can live in dens. They can also live under some um, roots that might be uh, going like this over the water as well, where they are going to be a bit more protected. Um, there has been some people that have reported that some of these dens, uh, the only entrance is uh, the uh, tunnel under the water. However, this has not been confirmed, but they will usually live in dens. Um, actually, you can see her. Well, you can see that she was trying to dig a hole right there. Um, and also on her private area um, over there, she has a sandbox um, where she can dig. And, and sometimes she was sleeping there. So, yeah. How cool is that? What a great enclosure. This is my first time doing an otter program with you. I know Joe has been <laughs> past. This is so much fun to, for me to see what uh, Emma has to play with. Guys, this has been a, a fantastic program. Thank you all so much for your interest, for your great questions and enthusiasm. I want to bring up on the screen for a minute, uh, Daniel is highlighting all the amazing ways that you can work to contribute to help otters. The best thing you can do when you're done this broadcast 
head to the Toucan Rescue Ranch site. They're really an extraordinary organization. They work to rescue, rehabilitate, and re-release all sorts of injured wildlife, uh, taking care of it in such an amazing way as we got a chance to see today. Uh, or I think the past few years, our classes and groups have raised well over $3,000 for the Toucan Rescue Ranch. So yes. Check that out, uh, go explore their website, and check out our YouTube channel. If you want to see the sloths or the toucans or more of the amazing wildlife there, it's all there. Uh, and always head to our website to learn more as well. Daniel, before we wrap up, is there any last message you want to share with us about otters and Evelyn, why they're so special? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Let me just change the, the camera. There you go. Now you guys can see me. By the way, I'm out without a mask. <laughs> so this is me. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to thank all of you who joined today. It was definitely a pleasure to have you here. Uh, just like Jesse said, uh, you can go to our website. Uh, you can also symbolically uh, adopt Emma, which is going to cover for the expenses. Um, and you can also join the uh, Venmo Club, which is just $2 a month. And every single dollar counts. You can also go, go to the IOSF uh, website to see how you can help and how you can donate. They also have an Amazon wish list there for many other organizations that help the otters and help the conservation of the, not only the you tropical know, river otters, but also almost all of the 13 species of otters. So uh, I just want to thank you so much. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful day. It was, so, it was a pleasure. What a fun program today and happy World Otter Day for Emma. Uh, I'm going to bring in all our classes as we always do to say a big thank you and goodbye. So Miss Petrillo, Miss D, Eagleswood, Miss Bitten, and our whole group, come on in guys and welcome in. Uh, say join me in saying a big farewell and thank you to